This episode of Gamescast is brought to you by Movement Watches. Movement Watches was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. The watchmaker's goal is to change the way consumers think about fashion by offering high quality, minimalist products at revolutionary prices. Greg gets all fancy for his dates with fancy Genevieve St. Ange Miller, and guess what? He's never late. Why? Movement Watches. Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price, classic design, quality construction, styled minimalism. It's all there. Get 15% off today with free shippings and free returns by going to movement.com slash kinda that's mvmt.com slash kinda kev big kev dog come here oh that, it doesn't look good just come show the people <laughs> it just look a dark thing there you go movement watches build it beautiful What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 140 of the Kind of Funny Games Cast. Every once in a while, it gets me. This is one of those times. 140. Yeah. It's a lot of shows. It is a lot of shows. I'm um, Tim Geddes, as always, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm great. I'm not great. Why? I'm not what happened? for the oh, first time. In a you while, went to the Macklemore. Which is which is nice. I did go to Macklemore. It was, it was a fun not time. Okay. But uh I, I just feel I, I think I might just be sick. Uh, that's the worst when you come out of like why, you come out of like a four day bender here. and then turns out you're not hung over, you're sick. You're just fucking the worst. Dead. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um but yeah, Andy's joining us, which is very nice. Hey very guys. I mean, wow. I mean, you played a lot of cool games. Wow, one of the most flaccid introductions I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm a flaccid dude. And right also now. Andy's here. You played games. I'm more flaccid right now than I've been in years and i replied with hey guys hey guys yeah very excited very about tepid. this That's i'll amazing. tell you what i am laser focused yeah you it's seem cool. like you have a good energy i'm too. i have a great energy during today. the morning show um greg fucking pops in the doorway and says it's gonna be a great day and it kind of like yeah you're right greg you're it right, is greg. gonna be a great day man yeah. mm. i feel it's better a, a now. lot last year we did employee reviews mm -hmm. and then granted yes there were just five of us then <laughs> but Nick made an employee review for him and it was one of those I never took it into account Andy until Kevin wrote it on his that I was like the barometer that if I was in a bad mood everyone was going to be in a bad mood but if I irradiated the goodness everybody could radiate the goodness and so like but is, and it, so a lot of times I fake it like I really don't like you guys and I don't want to be around mm -hmm. you oh, but today here. like I've been so from the jump on it, ready right? to go <laughs> faking faking it from the, from I have been <laughs> high on cocaine I've been faking it but in a good mood though. yeah exactly <laughs> I'm going the opposite yeah. way with the fake so no it's gonna be a great show here too if you ladies and gentlemen paid the dollar to watch this one live it's worth a dollar hell yeah oh look at that do the other one too uh, my left great. one isn't there's no like, ladies and gentlemen this is the kind of funny oh. games cast each and every week we get together right here on youtube.com slash kind of funny games talk about video games all the things we love about them and all that stuff what we've been playing all the goodness you can watch it early by going to patreon.com slash kind of funny games how early greg you can be watching it right now live thank you for your support thank you so or much you can watch it at your leisure on youtube or podcast services when it eventually comes i feel like we're starting to bury the lead though because we're advertising watch it live with the dollar neglecting you can watch it on demand five dollars mm. or ten dollars mm. you know what i mean i still like saying those numbers because they're higher i agree sticker shock but i agree i agree but i like being able to pay everybody so i just want to drive that home but you if you like think we're doing a real better. good job, you can watch it live and pay five dollars. You watch it live, yeah. Sometimes you get more bonuses. You can do there. both. Yeah, you get party mode now too. If you think we're doing a horrible job, you can ask us for money. You can actually tweet at Nick underscore Scarpino. Send me yeah. your Venmo and, now. and let him know. know. Let him know how you feel and how much money you want from him. Did I ever tell you the story? Of, you know, in like the the f I mean, how long was it? It feels like it. Uh, I'll say I'll, I'm ballparking, but the decade I was single before I met my wife, Jen. Uh, there was a girl who hit me up on Venmo. Like we, had, I, I had already, we hadn't talked, we had been talking and then like fell off or whatever. And then rather than text me or do anything like that, she Venmoed me one cent. I was just like, Hey, what's going on? And I was like, huh? Huh? It's Slide an interesting in approach. Oh, oh, interesting that's, approach. That's good. I respect it. Didn't respond to it. That's a, respect. that's a pretty cool maneuver. Right yeah. There. You want to steal that? Because it's a weird... Venmo your girlfriend right now. It's a different... <laughs> like, give give her two time. cents and be like, here's my two cents. Oh! She'll either love you or hate you. And then respond with 69. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, that'd nice, be pretty bro. sweet, wouldn't it? That's because you fucking lick pussy and she'd... Holy shit! Yeah. Whoa! This, this, is, no, the this, is, this is the games cast, sir. This is the games cast. What have you been playing? Um, the big one. The big Start one. Start us off right. Start us off right. what will probably be the headline of this show. I've been playing Shadow of War. Middle Earth. 
Loot box again. Microtransaction riddled. No, not really. <laughs> uh, so I'm having a blast with it. Really? Um, I played, but I'm also a giant Tolkien fan. Sure. And I love that environment. You're I love token. that universe. Yeah, bro. Woo. Um, so I played some at work while I was rendering things. And when I got home, and I talked to, uh, to Tim later that day, I was like, oh, I played some Shadow War and I can't wait to get him and play more. Yeah. And that's what I did. So I played more at home. Uh, again, it's similar to part one where it's hit square a fuckload. You know, yeah. you're hitting square all over the place. Because mm. um, that's the reverse button or the attack button? That's the attack button. Because it's got Batman. It's got the Batman Arkham style yeah, arc you're hitting, fighting. You're hitting square to attack. Uh, your triangles, your fucking uh, counter, yeah. shit like that. Uh, so the combat is obviously very, very samey, but they've added some things like uh, there's an upgrade to a, ju- a double jump, and uh, so your guy, there's no fall damage because you have the power I of got the power. Celebrimbor, who is the elf Ghost man that like he's the elf fucking like celestial god or whatever. Celebrimbor. Celebrimbor helped create help create all the Bitty original rings. Bum bum. <laughs> Celebrimbor <laughs> helped forge all of the original rings. Uh-huh. Which um I'm not that much of a Tolkien purist, but I've heard a lot of people who are <laughs> that have read all this shit that's like, man, they're kind of just playing fast and loose with this shit, right? There's a lot of stuff in the game apparently that happens they're like, no, that's not what happened okay, in but the that, original that nerd story. Shit out of the way, do you do you like the story? Um I'm not too far into it. Uh, essentially, there's a big spider woman who's like just a, she's supposed to just be a spider, but and she's a sexy spider woman. I didn't know about it until I read Carboni's tweet. He was like, "Hey, when did Sheila become like a fucking hot ass Arwen looking girl?" Yeah, um, because she's essentially a spider. She crawls out and then she like transform. Her like visual form is a a really like attractive woman. Uh, and essentially, she's like, "Yo, give me this ring." Uh, if you don't give me the fucking ring, I'm going to kill Celebrimbor. Or I'm going to keep him here. <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> if you don't give me the ring, I'm going to kill Celebrimbor. Yeah, okay. if, you don't, okay. if you don't give me the ring, I'm so, going to kill Bitty Bitty Bum Bum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you as Talion, uh, mm-hmm. this takes place in between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. There's like a 60 year span. Um, and so Talion, who's voiced by Troy Baker, it's super cool. Friend good looking and shit. Uh, you're like... All right, I'll give you the ring, and it, and Caleb Rainbow's like, no, dog, what are you doing? He can't do that shit. So I'm digging the story. Um, what they've obviously the nemesis system, nemesis system is awesome. Like you, a lot of the same stuff. Where if I don't kill a captain, if I encounter him again, he's like, oh, I remember you. Like I fucked you up last time. And so sometimes it might be higher level. Sometimes again, the the orcs that you the Urukai that you beat will come back from the dead. But they're like mangled, right? Yeah, that like this one guy had like a helmet and he had like shit like covering up his wounds, and now he's an epic orc or a legendary orc, and that's the whole microtransaction stuff where you can like mm. buy orcs and sometimes you get legendary orcs in these micro in these loot boxes or whatever. Uh, but I've already encountered I think three legendary uh, orcs or urukais or whatever, and so they um, when you eventually kill them, they drop loot for you, and so you can apply this like purple loot and it's like the purple one's a legendary one there's red orange and white i believe and white's like the most basic um but the fact that they've added uh sort of leveled armor i guess i don't remember that being in part one it probably was though but i don't remember it uh but now you can it's very system very similar to destiny where you get a better chess piece and you can break down the chess piece that you had for like your tokens or whatever sure and then you your can Tolkien use- tokens, <laughs> dude. You're on it today. Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? He said he was on it, but he's not proving it time and time again. Lying it. Um, so yeah, the the progression with armor is really cool, and then the uh, there's a lot of ne- again the double jump that you eventually upgrade and get is like you feel like you're just floating everywhere uh, because there's no fall damage. You have the power of this fucking elf dude who's always with you. You can like. Just jump super far and then double jump and he does a cool fucking like somersault kind of like sideways thing. It looks fucking rad. Um, but it's really cheap. Like you can hang on a ledge, jump off backwards and then double jump back towards the ledge. Mm, wow. It's just really silly looking, but it's it's fun. Uh, um, and that's kind of all I got to say so far. I don't really know where the story's going. Apparently the story isn't that great, but I spent like 
maybe three hours yesterday not even fucking with the story. I was going to say, do you even care? This doesn't strike no. me as the kind of game where you care about the story. No. I mean, so initially, I really, the cutscenes are beautiful. It's a game, I feel like this is the first game in the last 10 games where, oh, wow, the mouth syncing animations look oh, fucking great. Where, appreciate. Uh, yeah. Um, now, I am kind of, I know, I, I guess I was on Games Daily when I was talking about, I hope that there was like this big graphical leap from the last mm. one, because the last one was on 360 and PS3. There are certain captains uh, or captains that you encounter that pop up on the screen or whatever. And every time you have an orc targeted, uh, like if you encounter an orc and then um, you know that you want to target him to go after him to find out intel or whatever. Sure. When you hit the pause button, he's the first thing you see on your screen. Like it's like mm. on your screen, it's the the options and then the big ass orc just sort of sitting there doing, doing his idle animations. And some of them look great, and some of them, like, man, these textures are really low res, or these textures are terrible, or there's, like, weird, like, a belt buckle's right here, but it's, like, really stretched and warped, because, like, you can tell that some orcs got better treatment than others, mm, or whatever. Um, not orc quality. Your character looks fucking rad. Like, everything, armor-wise, face-wise, it looks great. Um, but you can tell that there's so many of these orcs that there's gonna be a drop in quality somewhere. Um, but... What I had really fun doing is finding orcs that had intel on the sort of nemesis army. So when you're running around in the world, there's a bunch of orcs you can kill, obviously. Some orcs have a symbol above their head that means if you kill me, I'm going to drop uh, I'm going to drop loot. And some orcs have the green little symbol, which means I have intel on these captains mm. in the world. So you don't want to kill the orcs with intel you want to essentially like do this little mind melt and you like go up to them and it goes into their brain and then you can find out info on the captains and you can find out their weaknesses. Just like in part one, you can find out the weaknesses, the strengths. This orc is uh, really um, vulnerable to fire damage and this orc is like terrified of those these big like dog fucking monsters or whatever that are mm. in the world. So he's scared of those, but he's not uh, susceptible to... You can't attack him from the front. You have to like jump over him a bunch and hit him from behind or whatever. And so you keep finding out intel from those. So for three hours, I was straight up just looking for guys with the green icons to find out intel mm -hmm. and clear out the whole army to have all of them. And I found it so... I, I had a blast, man. Uh, traversing the world, super fun. Uh, it's not really... I haven't really been challenged by it so far, which is weird. In part one, I remember dying a lot in part one. Mm. Part two, I haven't had that a whole lot. Um, but I'm really digging it, man. Awesome. Uh, I can't wait to play more of it. Yeah. Hell yeah. You been playing anything else? Uh, I played a lot more Hob over the weekend. Oh, I know yeah. when, uh, shut up about it. You're all yeah, about man. it. Yeah, man. So Gerard the Completionist was on last week, and uh, I talked a little bit about it because I just started it. But it is really fun, man. It's really good. Um, and as I was playing, I was like, is this game really good? Or is like, and then I looked at the ratings. I was like, yeah, a lot of people really dig this. Game. I got you the code, but I don't know anything about it. And I haven't listened to the Gerard episode yet. Uh, okay. So I didn't really say much on the Gerard because I had just started the game, but I put in like over this past weekend, I put in maybe like seven or eight hours into it. Um, it is a, an adventure action game, but more leaning towards puzzle stuff. So it's like a 3d version of like link to the past. There's okay. a lot of, there's a lot of platforming. Uh, but the level design is fucking genius. The world around you, uh, it, you know, the intro of the Game of Thrones intro where the things are coming through the ground. Like, that's how the world is sort of built. Okay. Um, and so, so many times you unlock things, things come out of the ground, these platforms go down. So now you go down there to get into that door that you couldn't get to mm. earlier. There's a lot of puzzle elements to it, but there's a lot of like, oh, fuck, yeah, like I figured this thing out and you. Um, there's a lot of like immediate satisfaction with the game. Um, the combat's kind of, uh, there are moments where the game shows that this is an indie game. Mm. Um, the UI looks kind of amateurish. Like it, it looks like they just got, like they didn't hire a UI oh, artist to make the com. UI. Yeah, exactly. Like it's like, I've been on projects where they're like, oh, you know, art, you could do this. Like, well, not really, but I'll figure it out. It looks kind of like that. It looks very, uh. Not great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the combat, um, the combat's pretty fun. You have, I was telling Tim and Gerard last week, it's very, uh, I hate saying this, but it's very Dark Soulsy. Like, mm. there's not a whole lot of it. The enemies die very quick. They're not big boss fights. They're not really intricate, but you have a dodge roll. You have a sword that, uh, 
you can find like currency in the world that helps you upgrade your sword attacks. So of course you just have your standard hack and slash, but you can uh, around the world there are these little like I don't like totems that you unlock and it gives you currency, and you can add a three sword hit or you can add. Um, essentially, the story is. It's really hard to figure out what the story is. There's no dialogue, okay. but it's super cute, and they emote really well, and the animations are neat. But you get think of like the pink shit in Lord of the in, uh, in Zelda all over the ground, the Ganon like mm. goop. Okay, there's a lot of like weird goop around the world, right? And you're walking around with this big, your little cute little dude in a little red suit, and you there's got like a big a, old arm. There's like a big no, but there's a big like sort of mech rock robot thing kind of walking with you. You get stung by the goop shit. It fucks up your arm, and then you, the guy like eventually cuts your arm off because you're going to be infected. Sure. And then he gives you one of his arms. So you have like this giant fucking mech arm that then unlocks a lot of things in the world. So okay. in order to get to this place, you have to punch the shit out of this platform, and it spins. Then you can climb up. and um, So you can upgrade your punch attacks in really cool ways. Um, you can upgrade your punch power. Um, there's not a whole lot of like... There's not a whole lot of combat. A lot of it more is... The puzzle aspects, uh, I'm really glad that they put in a respawn option in the start menu because there are there are times that the game will show it's sort of jank where I've gotten stuck three times just like, hmm. oh, I jump here and now my guy's stuck. Go to start, respawn. It's super easy. And I figured that's why they put in that yeah, feature. Yeah, that seems like a very yeah. targeted feature. Yeah, uh, but I'm thankful for it because there's never been a moment where I've lost progress. Like nice. It's hmm. constantly saving. Uh it's super fun, and I impl- like. I know there's a lot of things to fucking play right now. I think the game's m- probably fifteen or twenty dollars. Um, I I could not recommend it anymore. I mm. love it. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. Hob. Hob. H O B. Okay. H O B. What about you, Greg? Tim, what haven't I been playing? Yeah, you've been playing a little bit of everything. Where do you want me to start? Uh, let's start with the the Switch games you were playing. Okay. So first off, disclaimer. The biggest thing I've been playing I can't talk about. Mm. I'm under embargo for. Mm. Just want that out there. I've been playing something cool. Oh, I know. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. I know. Um, so which, the Switch game. Which I really want to play, but I'm like, no, nah, let me do Shadow of War because i got to have something to talk about. Sure. <laughs> of course. You're smart. But I had already played all this stuff, so I thought I was great. I'll set the scene for set you, Tim for me, Gettys. Please. I'm getting ready to go to me, NYC. Let's close, let's close our eyes. Let's set the scene, Tim. The so Big the Apple. Oh. And I say, all right, guys, it's finally time. He's still got his eyes closed. I like how you open yours. Oh, I open mine. I'm like, it's time for the little baby Switch to come out, do its magic, get ready, and show me what you got. Mm-hmm. Show I, me what you got. I watched Rick, a, Rick and Morty. Rick, a whole bunch of Rick and Morty. Yeah. This show's fucking awesome. It's great, right? Uh, uh, that's a time. Oh, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll cool. get to that because it plays into. I was going to Palm Springs after New York. So I have a lot of travel. I'm happy. This is A lot exciting. of Switch and stuff. Yeah. 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 I digress. A lot of shitty fans, but it's all good. Oh, it's just they like sauce. Golf Story. <laughs> it's just they like sauce. Golf Story had come out. I had played a whole bunch of it when Elise was here, when you, we la- that last games cast, all that stuff. I want to make sure I could talk about it there. Then, right as we were getting ready to go to this New York City trip, Stardew Valley comes out. And I say to myself, Greg, you never gave Stardew Valley the fair shake. Mm-hmm. You tried to play it on PlayStation 4, got distracted, never went back to it, didn't, didn't grab you. I'm like, this is the shot. Maybe it will. So let's start with these two. Golf Story, here's where I've come down on. I like Golf Story. I'm never going to knock Golf Story. I enjoy Golf Story. I've played it. I recommend people play it. I'm to the point, though, where the golf part of it isn't enough for me. I don't like the golf mechanics enough. And maybe, maybe coming off of everybody's golf, maybe having played so much hot shots, I'm in the rough. I'm like, well, clearly, I got to give it a little bit more. Yep. Fucking sails over the green. I'm like, all right, well, then I'll give it less. Still sails past the cup, and I'm like... What are the rules of this world when it comes to golfing? It's more about character development and plot. And, and that's yeah. great. And I'm not, and that's the thing is I, I'm still playing golf story. I will continue to play golf story. I enjoy golf story. But that was when I was like, you know what? Let's go do Stardew. Mm. Did you get in. to the part with the zombies? I did not get to the zombies. Okay. I know you were talking about that earlier. Okay. Uh, go, jump in. I'm going to play the Stardew. See if this will grab me here. I try to give it more time. And Joey Noel will have to come in here at some point and correct me if I'm wrong. Because it's the same thing as happened before. I'm playing through the Stardew Valley intro. I'm planting my parsnips. I'm doing, I'm watering. I'm doing this. I'm putting shit in the little thing that then gets sold and I get the money. Great. All this stuff's happening. But again, come here because I'm not insulting Stardew. I understand why people like Stardew, I think. But I'm playing through it. And I, and I don't know if it's just that I'm not giving it enough time, but I never got to mining, 
which I didn't, oh, is yeah. a big deal. I was watching. I, I'm playing this other game. Jen on the other TV next to me is playing uh, her Stardew save, and she's in mines, hacking at shit, fighting things. She's got a sword. It's different. It. How long do I need to give star to you, Joey, before I render a verdict if it's for me or not for me? I think you need to give it. I think it takes like ten days for you to unlock the mines and the community center. Not real ten. Not, not ten, ten in-game days. days. Ten days a game, you know. Then you know, it, it might, <laughs> I'd you say might that's like probably it. like four hours, maybe. Okay. Not even. Not even. Because there's progression throughout that. It's not like. It doesn't see. It doesn't seem that long. Mm. Again, it's the switch. The switch will be with me. I'm gonna get back to this. And, you know, well, eventually Mario will be there, and that's all I'll fucking play. But I want to give it a shot. It's just again, it didn't grab me. Mm -hmm. I'm on the plane. I'm like, I want to be grabbed by something. You know Here, what I mean? Here's my my feel with Stardew is like, Stardew is a game to play if there's nothing else to play, because it's it's a, it's like a Sims type game. Yeah. It is a you, you are growing your stuff and you're growing your crop and you're fucking hanging out with like local villagers like it's very similar to like Animal Crossing was a game that I played on 3DS where there are no big games story wise that I care about right now so I'm just gonna like fucking play Animal Crossing because it's fun and it's just kind of like a uh, a turn your mind off sort of it's game 100% do. it's what I do with Marvel Heroes yeah. where I pop on yeah. and I play Marvel Heroes I'm hungover I just want I just want to do something and not worry about story not worry about learning something it's just a world Joey like gave me I got a code for Stardew and I want to start it but there's so many other things that I like need to play it's i really yeah. want to play it though. i think that'll be it'll be your your gap filler for sure yeah. of like there you can you can jump in at any time even if you don't play for three weeks it's not like a what happened what am i jumping back into it's like oh it's all the same mechanics and stuff like that remember gap uh fall into the gap remember that song fall into the gap yeah is that the way it yeah. was like fall into the gap? That, fall into the gap. I don't. I don't. Know you don't remember that? I don't know. I don't know that version know, of fall into the gap. Talking about. About. Thank you. The, the gap clothing. Yeah. So I'm on Thanks, the plane. Josh. I quit out of that. I'm yeah. like, I just want something to grab my attention. Mm -hmm. I put Thumper in on on the switch. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, this is. I didn't grab me. It's not what I was feeling. The thing with Thumper VR. Uh, well, no, VR's. Everybody talks about PlayStation VR. VR is very cool with it, but honestly, that's just like a, it, that just adds to the experience. Yeah, Thumper on Switch is great. You need to get past the easy parts for okay. the game to get real. Where it's okay. like it's once it becomes a challenge because the first couple levels are are pretty just like all right, I, I get what this is. This is some simple rhythm shit. Yeah, but it becomes a lot more intense, and the the game gets you. It grabs you. So. I'm just going through now on the Switch. God. What do I have here that can know. grab me on this flight? Let's see. Golf Story didn't do it. Start is not it. there. Thumper's not there. You know what it is, Tim mm. Gettys? You mm. know what gets me, ladies and gentlemen? Conga Master Party. Now, you might say, are you fucking with you might me, Greg? Say this is a Greg Miller ass bullshit statement. Whoa! Whoa! What are you talking From about? The man that brought you Taco Master. Whoa! Master All right. Party. Now, there's no fucking trophies in it. Clearly, it's okay. not that kind okay. of game, you piece of Give shit. Give me the pitch. What if I told you. I forgot about Taco Master. Tim Gettys. Yeah. That while we were so distracted by all these other games coming out right now, someone went and released the spiritual successor to the last guy. Would I right? Okay, right. Okay. Exactly. That's what this game is, <laughs> and it's a goofy ass game. It's fun. It doesn't take itself seriously. What it is is you walk in. Go ahead, get in there, Andy. You walk. You use the shoulder buttons, right? Or yeah, the triggers are shoulder buttons to uh, or the L and R. So that's always confusing for me. But you use them to turn your. But you. What happens is this person walks into a party. And then you walk around people until you fill in their little meter, and then they join your conga line, and then you keep going. Okay. And there's like a hype okay. meter, or a, I forget what they call. I think, a it's, hype meter? I think it's called hype, but it's there's a momentum. Momentum. Momentum is what they call it. It's filled in and it's slowly ticking down. So you have to add people to build up your momentum. All right. Now you can't clear the level to move on to the next party <laughs> until you go through and over here on your uh, when you're looking at the screen, the top left corner, you have all these bars. Because what happens is you start going around people. Mm -hmm. Like there's a logo on there, looks a lot like the kind of funny logo, but they put sunglasses on it. I'm like, all right, I'll let it slide either way. But there's that. There's a heart. There's all those different stuff. Just saw it. You walk around these people. Their logo pops up, you fill it up, they join your conga line, and then they go over to the thing in the top left corner I was just talking about, mm -hmm. where they get added to that that icon's meter bar. And when you fill in all those meter bars, you then pass the level and clear and get to move on. Now, all right, you're ready to fucking. If party. your momentum runs out and you don't have the thing, you just lose. That's the end. Yeah. You got to get everybody. You've got to fill the bars. You got to get out. 
when you leave the party to walk to the next party, a UFO shows up. Does Gloria Estevan show up at all? No, I wish. Uh, a UFO appears and then puts down his tractor beam and starts stealing people from your conga line. So you have to you have to be running forward and then tapping A in this little mini game to hop over obstruction so you don't get stopped and have more people sucked up. Because then you take that conga line to your next party yeah. and then do it all over Prequel again. to Fire in the Sky. Oh Prequel. God. Maybe the sequel. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> all knows? the same. Yeah. I'm doing I great, like though. the idea of a conga line going from party to party. That, there's yeah. something about that. It's that, like bar hopping um, sort of thing. Yeah, but the Congo. Version. Or like, hey, uh, Travis uh, uh, Willingham's party just ended. Oh, let's, go to, let's go to Josh Parkinson's. Josh, yeah. Oh, go to Josh, Josh Parkinson's. Yeah. I thought you were going to do dude. like a whole critical role thing, but you just uh, didn't. Oh, yeah. that's right. That yeah. is his name. Yeah. <laughs> Big Dallas Cowboys fan. I was going to say Travis Barker. He is. Yeah. You go. It's got. I love that Travis Willingham's a Cowboys fan. Okay. Put, the, put that up to the speaker. We got some jams there. This is me right this now. This is a weird ass game. It's a weird ass game. How much game? is it? I don't remember. I don't. I, I, I think I got a code for it, so I can check it out. I, I, thanks to the power of the Nintendo eShop, I can just pop on there and tell you, mm -hmm, my Konga Master. Mm -hmm. But what, it, however much it was, was it worth it? Hundred percent. Okay. I gotta imagine it's fifteen bucks, maybe. Whoa! No, no way. No? That's gotta be like a ten dollar game, five dollar. I'm maybe. hoping five. I'm really hoping for that sweet nasty four ninety nine. Oh no way! It's five bucks. Hold on, Konga. Is now is the eShop dumb? Will it not That's show me? That's a fucking mobile game. Like yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know what? There are there's just games now. We don't do that. They're we just don't games that. now. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't, do we don't that say that anymore. <laughs> uh, and then you were also playing. Uh, See, it does that thing where it just says purchase now. So somebody have to Google mm, it for me. Mm, Give me I'll a Google. It. I'll do it. What? And then another lost phone. Oh yeah, right. So then the other thing I did was I finally on the way back from there. I, so uh, so I went to New York, mm -hmm. played a whole bunch of these Switch games. Mm, Big Apple. Exactly. Went from New York to uh, Palm Springs. Uh, got to Palm Springs for Scott Lowe, Cindy's birthday. Uh, played a lot more Mario Kart. And let me tell you, here's what I'd like to say about Mario Kart. Big palm tree. Eight Deluxe, as you know. Mm -hmm. First off, Andy, did I clown these people out all weekend long? Of course I did. Scott Lowe's got nothing for me or any of his mm -hmm. other friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just nobody. It's just Ten dollars. Okay. What I want to do, though, is that fine for you? Ten bucks for Congo Master, too much, too it's high? It's fine. It's fine. All okay. out. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. Congo Master, worth ten bucks, everybody. Okay. Uh, Conga Master, Conga, Conga Master Party. Sorry, I don't need to buy the wrong Conga Master. <laughs> um, I did something I've never done with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and that is pop off the Joy Con. You did good. And put. Oh, first off, oh. you know I'm better than you. It's on footage several times. You know what I mean? Several times. Fine. We haven't talked about this, Greg. Yeah. Something that I know you've never done because no one has done this except for real pros is use the rear view mirror button. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Have you ever done that? No, because I don't find it helpful. Dude, so watch the Mario Kart section of the Nintendo World Championships and have your fucking mind blown. Okay. It's crazy. What, are they dodging shit? They're constantly, yeah, dodging all the time, all the fucking shells. Huh. They're just constantly going back, and they never get hit by green shells, ever. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. Well, green shells from the back usually don't get me. It's when usually they start ping-ponging off the sides. Again, but when the blue, there's one a moment with the blue shell yeah. where it's coming after him, and he sees where it's coming from, and he just goes off the track. Because it gets you back on the track quicker than if the blue oh, shell hit you. Damn, that's a oh, fucking that is a pro maneuver. That's, maneuver. that's some Zyger maneuver. shit. Yeah, you should check it out. Anyways, played with the joy single Joy-Con oh, no. for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I'll tell you what. Preferred? Of course not. Did my hands cramp up towards the end? Of course they did. But I was able to get... I thought for sure I'd be fucked up. I was totally fine. I was in there. I was competing like this. No big deal. No big deal. You know? I would have wanted the fucking screw attack, Mega 64, game attack, kind of funny thing at mm -hmm. Rooster Teeth. Had I been using a regular pro controller. See, but I'm saying if you're... I would have fucked them up. If you're really good in Mario Kart like Greg Miller, it doesn't matter, the controller. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could probably hand me an N64 controller and somehow I would make that work on the Switch version and do it. That's how good you are. I digress. Uh -huh. On the way home from Palm Springs. Also, we played the Jackbox games on there, but you know Jackbox City of is Angels. Good. City of Angels. Jackbox Palm 4 coming very soon. Uh, way home. Mm -hmm. Did another lost phone. Laura's story completed I should say because I remember on the show I think I talked about it where I, I tried to start it it seemed way more puzzly it seemed like it was getting too cute with all this stuff mm. having completed it I feel the same way oh really I'm just like I, I wasn't as engaged with this story and I, I maybe it is frame of mind again where I was like alright let's get back into this I'm going and like I was I, I, I wouldn't even lie I used a guide because it was the thing of just like I was like I don't want to read through 400 text messages right now to figure out what I need to do to get into here because there's it feels like there's just more content everywhere Which on the service sounds great, but it's not more Story 
I don't feel. It's just more content. Well, there's more people she's talked to. There's more. There's her email, and then there's this job thing she's using, and there's this, and there's that, and it was just like, there's a lot of shit to sort through to get through. And like I was telling you before when I was on the show, I think, where I looked at it, I'm like, as an example, like your penultimate boss's office number plus this yeah. divided by, and I'm like, like this is I don't fucking want to do that no. at all. So then by I went, th- I used a guide a couple times because I was like, I don't fucking feel like trying to figure out where to go. Got to the end, read, the, and it was just like, I, even at the end, I was just like, this didn't feel as rewarding as the first game. The, yeah. the first game I thought was the perfect, hey, it's in here. It's challenging you, but it's not beating you over the head with it. And it's also not just giving you the answer necessarily. Yeah. I digress. It's a balance. Yeah. I, I know other people have liked it, so give a shot if you like that. But. And then the last game you've been playing. No, I got more than that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I got two things. Was right. Batman. Well, yeah, Batman and then Friday the 13th put out the Got new uh, Jarvis house map. I mm-hmm. did a run through of it this morning with a couple kind of funny best friends. Thank you. Uh, it seems interesting. We're doing, as of recording this, we're doing the Friday the 13th live stream tomorrow on Friday the 13th. I'm looking forward to playing there and getting more of a feel for it because going through and doing it, there was definitely a sense that the map seems at first blush to be, they've taken lessons from the other maps and applied them here. Mm. Whereas like uh, there seems to be more... I guess peaks or mountainous terrain or whatever where I, I can't ghost around as easily. Like people were on the other side and I was like, oh fuck, and I had to go wide and try to get over there to get oh. them. The Jarvis house itself has an upstairs, uh, uh, I believe, yeah, upstairs, a regular ground floor and then a basement. Oh, cool. And I think, I'm not 100% sure on this because it was I played once and the fucking light was coming in onto my computer monitor. I was trying to so crank up the shady. brightness. You know what I mean? Uh, it seems like basement can only be accessed from outside on the ground floor. So like I was upstairs and I couldn't figure out how to get down. I had to go out and do it, but um. I need to tinker more. However, maps seem cool. It's more Friday the 13th, which of course I'm down for, but it seems it actually does seem different than the other ones. Whereas I felt like Crystal Lake and Pananak, Pananak Lodge or whatever, they've all felt very similar. Whereas this one felt, hey, this is something different and cool. Hmm. So I'm excited to play more of that tomorrow with cool. the best friends. And then, yeah, the big one, that I played was Batman, uh, Telltale Batman episode two, uh, season two, episode two, right? What's this season called? The shadow enemy within enemy within. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to get spoilery for it because I feel like, I, you know, the Telltale Batman games in particular, I totally avoid the trailers for the best I can. I Is think that what you streamed enemy within. With with, oh yeah, with one. with Anthony and Troy. Yeah, I did episode one with them. Oh, episode one. Okay. And then gotcha. yeah, this is episode two that just came out. Um, some cool people join the mix. You know what I mean? I, I So episode one, ta- it ends with like, you know, um, spoil that or no? Just Can don't. I, just no? don't. Just. You know that there's going to be a team of supervillains or a team of bad guys in some respect. I, it's not, I don't think it's, spo- this is a spoiler, I guess, if you know nothing, but team Rocket. they leaned heavily on showing you that Harley was going to be a big part of mm-hmm. the big part of this or whatever. Um, Harley this time around, I don't like her voice acting. I didn't like her, uh, uh, stylization, I guess, if you will, or like how they not dressed her, but just her look. Mm-hmm. I didn't like her look this time around. However, she's a really interesting dynamic with uh, John Doe, the Joker, who or the man will become the Joker in her, which is different. What I thought was really cool. You know, Telltale's been really uh, insistent and rightfully so that this is their universe and they're going to do their own different thing. things Keep and own things. Yeah, yeah. And so it is a very interesting Joker Harley dynamic that I haven't seen before. Cool. Uh, maybe it has been played out before. And then the people that are on the team were unexpected for me where it's like, I thought so, that more fanfare would have been made or it would have been something I couldn't avoid. So I thought it was cool that I did avoid it and get there. Uh, overall, I had fun as I always do. I felt like it was a weaker episode than episode one was, but I, it also is of course hard to judge these cause they are building to something. Yeah. They're telling you a narrative. And so to go episode by episode, I think this is a weaker episode than episode one, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, but I thought episode one was a better package overall, but this one's interesting. I like what it's setting up. We'll go from there, I guess. Awesome. I want to go back to Shadow of War really quick. Yeah. Um, uh, visual wise, because it, uh, it seems like all I do is like critique visuals in games now. <laughs> but uh, well, you are a developer. There's a there's a there's an option to favor resolution or favor like performance or looks or whatever. Are you playing on a pro or are you just playing? I'm playing on a pro, right? Okay. But I'm playing just on a standard monitor, 1080p or whatever. Um, so I'd assume that if I were on 4K, it would try to like super sample 4K and kind of do a fake 4K. Normally when you do that, the quality of visuals, the quality of frame rate goes down. So I'm playing on like the better look, but not 4K version of it, right? Not res- It's not favoring resolution. And there's still a lot of like pop-in issues with like like certain leaves and rocks that just like don't pop in correctly. Um, and, uh, and I'm hoping that they patch, do a patch for that because I feel like the 
PS4 Pro should be able to run this stuff a little bit better. And like, I'm playing on the option that should look the best. And I, if I'm still seeing this stuff, I can't even imagine what the standard, uh, what the standard, like favoring resolution looks like because it's probably a good amount worse. Also, I saw a moment that somebody posted on Twitter yesterday. Uh, so when you're fighting these captains, whenever one of them downs you and kind of kills you. Your health is like a sliver, like you got a fucking like pixel uh, length of health and the captain's gonna do one final hit and as he's gonna do it, a, a QTE pops up and you have to hit the button right when it gets to the certain, like the circle's getting smaller than when it gets within the boundaries, you hit the button and you fucking like deflect it. I believe you can do that twice before getting ultimately just killed yeah, and yeah. starts you over. Um, but I saw a really cool moment on Twitter and I can't wait for it to happen to me because it's gonna be fucking cool. I hope it happens. Uh, a captain's like, about to down him and it's uh, it looks like he had already died twice so the option didn't pop up for him and as he's about to get killed a random soldier like who's oh, in nice. the area fucking like stabs a dude and he's like uh i know you do the same for me uh um what do they call him? Kill, kill, he's kill like aragorn bomb. yeah for rodo <laughs> Four Rodo. <laughs> um no but that that's another cool thing about uh, in the intro scene uh, which is uh, Minas, Minas Ethil, the, uh, you're around a lot of soldiers, which I don't really think that ever happened in part one. You are around a lot of other humans that are like trying to fight off these Uruks and these orcs. Um, and that felt really cool. Now, the bummer is that like they all have the same run animation, so there's like seven of them all doing the same. Uh, like it looks kind of weird, but fighting with them is super cool. I just, every time I see them, I'm like, oh, I want to go with them and just kind of like help them out. And so they might like, you know, see a group of weeks that they want to go take on. So I'm like, yeah, I'm part of the crew, whatever. Of the crew. I just love that feeling. Like whenever I'm around, um, whenever I'm around people that aren't just always enemies or whatever. So yeah, that's kind of a neat change, and it may not be a change because I didn't beat part one, but uh, I certainly loved it. So awesome. One thing that I definitely want to talk to you about because we didn't get to last week because the timing and stuff. Star Wars Battlefront Two. Mm, right, you got to play a lot of it during the beta. The, now, the thing that reminded me is you're talking about the visuals and graphics and stuff, and loot boxes. Have you seen? Yeah, and loot boxes. But have you seen all the the gifts of the leaves and the foliage? In, it's incredible. Uh, Battlefront Two. It's like Battlefront One looked beautiful, amazing. Yeah, to the point where it's like I enjoyed playing that game because of the visuals. Right. Battlefront Two seems to be solving a lot of the the gameplay problems and adding content, all that. But it looks even better. And some of these gifts, like Google Star Wars Battlefront Two uh, leaves, and just look at them. Damn it! Now they're not loading. But whatever. Trust me, Greg. Okay. It's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. to see how fucking cool um, these leaves look. <laughs> I uh, yeah, that game. So they use a little thing called. Um, oh God, I forgot the fucking frostbite. Game. You know I love coming up with these game dev terms. Yeah. Of, Oh, photogrammetry. Got it. And so that's where they just like straight up take photos of rocks from like 80 different angles and then it creates a 3D model and then the artist goes in there and kind of modifies it if needed. So that's why everything looks so incredible. But that's a game where like I look at that game's graphics, it's like, oh man, I wish like I wish every game looked this yeah. good. It's the most beautiful game I think it's out there the right now. The polish is just yeah. unbelievable. So like the the modes that are foot on the ground, I am a droid, or I am, I am uh, a droid, or I am a clone trooper. I, am a clone trooper. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't love them, man. I just don't really I like. And, and I think especially coming from, I got a tweet that like summed my thoughts perfectly of like, man, coming from Destiny Two and then coming to these, uh, going to Battlefront Two and feeling the controls like. Sure, it's a, it's a drastic difference, but it just doesn't feel as good. Like, shooting a gun doesn't feel as good in Battlefront as it does in Destiny. Um, but the Starfighter mode is the one that I found myself going to all the time. Like, once I figured out that I'm not digging this... Like, of course, I'm going to probably enjoy it more when I'm in a story mode. But um, I just don't love the multiplayer, uh, like, boots on the ground mode. I, I believe it's, like, Assault, and there's another one that's... Uh, um, it's like a six, a twelve, a twelve v twelve, sort of capture these points mode or whatever. Mm. Um, but the big uh, twenty v twenty mode is uh, that's where you are clones versus the the um, emperor, the stupid fucking doofy droids like battle droids. Charger. Yeah, the battle droids. I hate them. Um, but the starfighter mode is a is a mode that I was like, 
why would I like this? This seems so archaic. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Like, I guess just because I think of Rogue Squadron and I think of uh, Star Fox. Like, those are games that I played back in the day that I probably won't enjoy now. Kind of like Tony Hawk. Like, mm, that sort mm. of style of, like, oh, in-air fighting. Like, that's a, and young Andy would have enjoyed that. I love the Starfighter mode, man. It's so fun. Um, you you are the Federation or you're the, uh, the Rebels, and you get to play as... Uh, you can pick X-Wing, A-Wing, or Y-Wing bomber. Uh, and I went for the A-Wing every time. Hell yeah. I love the A-Wing. Of course you did, man. Uh, or it's on the... Cool design. For Andy. Or, or you could do uh, like TIE Interceptor, TIE Bomber, and TIE Fighter. Um, but the modes are essentially like... They're very clear and concise. It's like, oh, you got to take out these ships. Um, and then when that's done, you got to take down the shield defenses. And then when that's done, like... When I was the uh, when I was the rebels, I, we never won. <laughs> so I, and, and I felt that like that happened all the time in Star Wars Battlefront One beta. When you were on Hoth, I felt like one of the teams always won. Mm. Uh, whether I was on that team or on the other side, it's like rebels always won. And I feel like that's the case here. And it may just be a balance thing or whatever, because uh, they they did end up extending that beta. But the Starfighter mode is so fucking fun. And now it's a I would see myself playing that game a lot. Um, obviously, with the story mode, it's going to be awesome. But the Starfighter mode is one that a mode that I actually want to jump into, and like I found myself wanting to play it more and more. Awesome. The matchmaking in the beta was really shitty. Like you couldn't you on your home screen it says, "Hey, all these friends are playing Battlefront 2. and then in the game it says, "No friends are playing." So you can't. You would just have to like hope that you can jump into somebody's group. Uh, so I jumped into like Barrett's group. And Barrett's really good. Yeah, so, I saw all of his tweets where yeah. he's just like wrecking shots. Really weird. Uh, he's Barrett's, usually terrible. He's, he sucks as a human. <laughs> he's just uh, a bad person. <laughs> no, but uh, it's fun, and I um, I hope that I grow to love the boots on the ground mode mm. stuff because it's gorgeous and it's just like eye candy it's for me. So but, authentically Star Wars. Yeah, but I don't know. Well, I I hope I love it, but I don't think I will. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I've been able to have too much time playing anything because of Cuphead. Still stuck in that Cuphead. Still stuck in that Cuphead cup. Head. Head, yeah. Um, I, so it's mate. the same story I've been telling a million times, but I have two bosses left. I think I need to have a little space from the game. For Walk right away from it for Walk a second? Walk away from it for a little bit. Is it play. beating you down? It's This this boss is beating me down in a way bitch. where it's just, it's just too much for me. Mm. But like to follow up on what I, I said uh, last week on Gamescast, I love this game. It is definitely one of my favorite games of the year. Uh, it's one of my favorite games of the last decade, I'd wow. say. Like, it's so fantastic. Everything... It plays, and the the game itself is as good as the visuals and the the aesthetics and sounds and everything. Like, it is a very very special game, and I I'm happy to see that it's selling so well because I hope we get DLC. I think it's a uh, a game that can that I can easily see how they can make DLC work. Uh, just add more bosses, and there was a lot of cut stuff from the trailers. Like someone on NeoGaf went through and was like, "Hey, look at all these screenshots of things that just straight up aren't in it." And there's a uh, four or five boss designs that we've seen in demos that just aren't in the game. Nice. Um, so that is very exciting to me. Uh, but yeah, give the game a shot. And it's not as hard as people are saying it is. It's like, I think that it'd be easy to get caught up in it and be like, oh, I can't, I just can't do this. Cause they're all, it is very challenging and difficult, but it's just a matter of understanding what you need to do for each boss section. And uh, the trial and error thing I know isn't for everybody, but I think this game does such a good job of giving you the ability to restart so quickly and it doesn't get in your way of trying things over and over and over and having it be like, oh, I get this instead of having to slog through long sections over and over. It's always like, all right, cool. The, no boss fight besides the one I'm at uh, lasts longer than like three minutes, which is nothing. So that's really cool. The biggest complaint I have now that I'm in the late game is there's a lot of times so you can have two different weapons on you at any time and you can switch between them so you can have like your normal just like pew pew gun and you can have like a spread gun or a homing one that's a little weaker uh or a charge shot and you can like choose a loadout that has two of those you can also you get abilities through the game and you can choose one ability um and then there's a super move and you can have three different supers so between that, there's a lot of options for, for loadouts to go through. And each boss, obviously, some weapons aren't just totally not even effective. Some are really effective. And 
trying to figure out what combinations best for each boss is like really part of the game. And that's the one place the game gets in its own way. Mm. It, you can't change your loadout unless you're on the map. So you have to uh, exit the, the boss fight to go back to the map. And that's one of the only places in the game with loading screens. Uh -huh. And it's a cute little loading screen with a little hourglass guy like jumping on all about. But like that's a feature that I think should have been accessible from at least the the boss menu at the end. Because like I understand that they don't want you to be able to switch stuff mid fight because that's not fair. But once you lose, like you should be able to equip Change your, your loadout, your, yeah. your loadout uh, before retrying. But because uh, I it sounds like a minor annoyance, but when it's a trial and error. You're thing trying things over and over I and over. Face yeah. off against boss 37 times, and I keep changing it. It, it get it does add up. Uh, but fucking cuphead, check that fucking shit out. cuphead. Now it is time for this week in gaming history, and I want to give a shout out to Patreon producer Tom Bach. Tom, big old Tom Bach. The myth, the legend, gave you a PlayStation hoodie. He did. You look damn good in it. Thank I you. like it. So and he and okay. I mourned over the weekend when the Packers beat the Cowboys. We were very sad on Twitter. Uh, I was very depressed. Still haven't recovered, Greg. It's okay, man. Fucking Aaron Rodgers. He's so good. I've been saying that since day one. Yeah, man. man. Um, one year ago, on October 10, 2016, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood came out on PlayStation VR. And fuck you. I know you like it. I love that game. Uh, but what blew my mind, that was a year ago. Yeah. yeah. VR was a year ago. It feels like it was longer than that to me. Yeah, what's like, happening? We were here. Like, I know it was in our <laughs> early days of being here. But yeah, man, PSVR. Like, it feels like a two-year-ago thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I loved Rush of Blood. It was my favorite of the... See, what that does is get me excited because that means the inpatient's close. We're in close it's to the, close. the next one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be good. Super massive. That's a prequel, World. right? Yeah. Like 40 years beforehand? Yeah, yeah it's, at the, it's at the Insane Asylum from Until Dawn. I don't know how much it's really going to play into the actual... The Windejo and all that jazz. But, like, yeah, it's going to... You know. Windigos? Wind, Windejo, they call them, I think. Oh. It's a culture thing. I don't know if that's true. I'm mm -hmm. just... Uh, did you play Rush of Blood at all? No. Mm, you missed out, man. No. Nah. That's too scary. It, was, it wasn't even yeah. that it was scary as much as it was just like, oh, it's a shooting gallery. I mean, yeah, it is a shooting gallery. It's but like, this is like what we were afraid of when VR got announced, right? Of like, they'd all be shooting gallery, they'd all be yeah. on rails, they'd all be... And I know, don't get me wrong, I know it was great, it was good. My thing is that it did it right. It's like, yeah, it is the easiest thing to do, but I think, especially when you did add the spook factor, where there, it was scary, Ooh, like, being in the thing and like, turning around and then there just being a fucking dude right there. It was like... It, it made me feel something just that a lot of people like, do. What's up? <laughs> like, I mean, like nurse hey, dude, this is lady. fucking scary, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared, bro. Dude, be careful. Look yeah, ahead. Yeah. Don't look back here. Cool Greg loved it. Remember? What's up? Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, the roller coaster game with the VR oh, game. The VR game. Cool Greg approved. Put it on the box. <laughs> Three years ago on October 14th, 2014, The Evil Within came out on PC, PS3, PS4, 360, and Xbox One. I didn't remember that being a cross-gen game. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. And now, here, Evil Within 2. The sequel is upon us. Coming out like now. Tomorrow, right? Isn't yeah. it the official the release post, tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Andrea's addicted to it. Andrea's super, super into it. Really? Yeah, she was talking about it before we went live with Games Daily, and I don't think we actually got to it, but the embargo lift this morning, huh. like 7 a.m. or whatever. Yeah, she's, she was like, I planned on playing it for just a little bit, and I played four hours. And she's like, I'm really into it. I'm like, oh, awesome. that's awesome. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. The game definitely needs people talking about it. Yeah. I don't know. We talked about this on Games Daily, right? And the f way of. I want to get Pete back to talk about this and when this is all said and done that and Wolfenstein too of like did these games meet your expectations exceed or go underneath them because I do feel like they Where's have the marketing push behind this well game? they there is one like uh, uh, we talked about on games dealing a guy wrote in and was like hey I watch a lot of TV and I'm seeing commercials There's for commercials it all over the place. and it is that thing where they launched the uh, uh, giving campaign you know the good the good within or whatever mm -hmm. and part of it, like so it's out there and it's also that's just not a mainstream game. Like, that is a game aimed at. Did you like Evil Within 2? Are you in the mood for a Halloween game? Like, here you go. And granted, I think there are a lot of people who are in the mood for Halloween games, but you, for a game like that, word of mouth is going to hopefully spread throughout and it'll yeah. be this, you know, movement right here. Not me, no thanks. Not me. It's because mm -hmm. you're a baby cow or baby pants. Oh my God. Fuck. You just nailed you Eddie went. in a way that I've never heard Dude, someone nail someone. You fucking went there and I, I just did. didn't expect you to. Just like, I'll do it. Five years ago on October 9th, 2012, Dishonored 1 came out on oh, PS3 yeah. and 360. Five years ago. Like Bethesda that still loves such this a new IP. Bethesda loves this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 I mean, yeah, I think that they found that nice little niche that now is not so hey, nice anymore. Hey, here's this game that, you know, we think is cool, but we don't know if you'll like it. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to put out this game before Christmas, and then now everybody's like, hey, let's do before you know Christmas. Let's do it before that. Let's <laughs> give it a real early shot there. Uh, did you play Dishonored at all? You seem like a Dishonored guy to me. No, no. I tried the original. I tried part one when they 
I think it was like on Xbox Live Gold. It was a, a free game on Gold, the uh, HD version or like the remake. Of, no, what, what, what do you call it? Definitive edition. Yeah, I guess so. Well, when they put it on PlayStation or PlayStation Four. Yeah, and they're things. like, hey, better graphics, 1080p, yeah, yeah, yeah. blah blah blah. Um, and I played like an hour of it, and I was like, I'm just not feeling this right now. Mm -hmm. Um. I really feel like I should have played part two because people like Alana Pierce wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. That was Dishonored one though. The people who love Dishonored love Dishonored. Like, they well, I don't know because I don't. Like, I don't think. I think I heard Alana say like she I'm didn't back. even love part one, but part two was like another story. Like part two was like another level. This is like the most brilliant game design I've ever seen, sort okay. of thing. And okay. so they were hyping it up a lot. And I even remember like. I think because Alana may have been visiting in Austin and Bernie Burns is like, oh, she won't shut the fuck up about it. Should I play this game sort of thing? But no, I, that's a franchise that's just like never. Didn't click for me. Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to, I mean, I wanted to like it enough, I guess. Uh, it just the setting wasn't there. I never really liked the mechanics of it. I love the art style. Like sure. it's very, uh, it reminded me of like a more stylized Bioshock, obviously. Yeah. Um, where everything is like, more stylized than Bioshock, huh? Huh? You can't get more stylized. No, no, no. I mean, like, no, no, no. Stylized to the point where, like, the... I guess when I use the word stylized, it's, like, how human do the humans look? Mm. And so, like, in this game, they looked a lot more, like, cartoony. Sure. Okay, um, I understand. Giant hands. Like, it's art style. Yeah, 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 very, very, like, you know, exaggerated facial features. Um, But the art, like, being so... Everything was, like, hand-painted where... I don't know. It was one of the... It's. Of that era, most games were trying to go for ultra realism. Sure. And they were fine with like, no, we're just going to like paint a rock texture. Mm. And we're going to, you know, sort of just Photoshop and draw these. They have fucking artists on, great artists on that team. So the art, the, I guess the, uh, the art direction really art drew me notch, in, but right? I just never, ever wanted to play yeah, it. Yeah, never clicked for me. We're talking about Super Mario Bros. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Next up, uh, eight years ago on October 13th, 2009, Brutal Legend came out on Whew. PS3 and 360. I never played it. Me yeah. either. No. Not Did at all. anyone? <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. Did people like it? Was Damon, Brutal I remember, Legend liked it. Good. Damon reviewed it and he liked it. But the problem with Br Brutal Legend that was always what was being said at the time was the fact that it sold itself as one game and then you jumped in and it became an RTS or whatever. Oh, that's right. And everybody was like, what the fuck is this? Like, how is this? It, it was an uh, RTS? I thought it was like a 3D platformer, sort of like. I think it, it was supposed to be. I thought everybody thought it was going to be like a third person, I'm going to beat the shit out of everything. Game. And then you got in there and it was very much like strategy. What the fuck? Could That's be wrong weird. on that, but I believe that. I don't know about strategy, but I do remember it being Look a weird it genre thing. Yeah, it was a genre. It was it was definitely a genre switcheroo. Mm. Eight years ago, on the same day, October 13, two thousand nine, Uncharted two among thieves. <laughs> pretty good game. It's a pretty pretty good. It's a pretty good game, man. Some would say it's the best Uncharted game, and they'd probably be right. But yeah, I'd say part then there's other people. I like Uncharted four more. I mean, as long yeah, as it's Uncharted four. Yeah, that's that's what matters. Better one. Uh, then nine years ago on October 13, 2008, Dead Space came out on PS4. Dead fucking Never space. What? Dude, scary, man. Dead, Dead Space, space is, awesome. is worth it, man. It's worth the spooks. No, bro. It's a special game, man. I think that's a game where a few years ago I was like, let me watch some Let's Plays. So I watched like, I don't know, fucking Markiplier or some shit play that game. And I just... I, w I could never sit down with that game. That's a game where my friends are playing it and I'm sitting next to them like eating hot Cheetos watching them play. Got it. Like I'm fine in that environment, but like actually having to do the things, it's like, nah, dude, I can't do it. I can't That's why I just end up staying in like the safe spots for like 40 minutes. Yeah. Like, do You're I want to like, go? Good. Or do I I'm just good. This is where the story yeah. ends. Yeah. <laughs> this is where the story Dead Space was super special in the way that at, well, I was at IGN at the time. We had done a bunch of coverage leading up to it. And then, I don't know, it, it never I, it never sold me on what I was seeing, because we did, like, the grindhouse trailers of, like, the million deaths of Isaac and all these different things. It was head getting ripped off on the necromancer. It's like, all right, whatever. And I remember bringing that home and playing it that first time and being, like, so in love with that game from the jump of not having a HUD that beat you over the head. And I know this is also modern easy to every game does this now but the fact that your health bar was the spine of the suit you were wearing when you did need a menu or a map you opened it up and it popped up in front of you in three dimensions so it looked like it was in the movie you were playing and then it was the thing of like just like the doom movie man when the game was so good at catching you off guard with the scares and using red herrings and all this different yeah. stuff of like like there be of course the ammo you needed or the switch you needed was right over there by that dead body and so you're just like fuck I'm down to my final three bolts on this gun you start approaching you get there 
It doesn't do anything. You get what you need. And then it's like, you know, out of the left, left field, something completely foreign would jump on you. Not to mention that they, it was one of those few games that I think did a really good job of, hey, you know, you're the everyman, Isaac. You've been talking, tossing this situation, uh, Isaac Clark. You're an engineer. You're not meant for this. You're using weapons that aren't meant to be weapons. They're meant to be tools. And it, it didn't, you never felt. Man, I don't have a shot, but you also never felt like I'm a super I soldier. This, I'm is, here to kill this thing and do all this different that's stuff. That's what survival horror needs exactly. to be. Exactly. That game came at a, a point where Resident Evil had then kind of sh- switched genres. And so that being the kind of standout uh, survival horror game was, was so cool. And my favorite thing about it was because you had to use tools and it being unique. You're not just out there shooting people. It was so much fun to change the angle yep. of the... What was it called? The, uh, the, the, the plasma the plasma cutter? cutter. I think that yeah. is right. Yeah, uh, and just fucking slicing off the limbs of these things. Like it, I love that it wasn't just oh headshot, headshot. And headshot. that was another thing, right? Of like, yeah, it's a, these are these are necromorphs. Don't shoot them in the head. Shoot them. Yeah. Do all this different stuff. Like play with all the conceptions you had of how this is supposed. So to So it was scary as hell. It was fun as hell. And it was you losing your mind too. And, and, and yeah, you and dealt the, with the Nicole, story like, was so interesting. Yeah. Like I thought they did a really good job. Like when you finish that game, you're like, wow, this wasn't the generic scary game that i thought yeah it was gonna exactly be. exactly yeah, yeah especially with a, a generic name right yeah dead, dead space, space like a weird thing but like yeah what an ending too like the final scene of that game of getting into the ship finally and then you, he takes his helmet off and takes or he doesn't take his helmet off he has that moment just to take a breath i want to say he takes his helmet oh, off but i thought it was a big bro. two in in part two whatever anyways i think he takes his helmet off and then nicole pops up as a necromorph and yeah. attacks and then it cuts it's to like black it's like fucking real. brilliant too fucking real. brutal legend is an action adventure video game with real-time strategy game elements mm. so that i was correct you Fuck correct. y'all. and then a huge one here 10 years ago on october 10th 2007 half-life 2 episode 2 came out on pc as did portal as did team fortress 2 that orange box because the orange box oh. on 360 never picked it up what any of them have you played those games though yeah yeah okay oh you just need to buy the orange box okay okay no i never picked up the orange box no Mm, um mm. it was a game that i walked by several times at GameStops because it was a GameStop near the car dealership that i worked at when i had just like gotten my first like real job or whatever um and uh there was a GameStop near that car dealership so that my lunch break was like to walk over there and i'd always look at it and I always wanted to get it, but I just played it like my friend's copies yeah. and stuff like that. Team Fortress 2, so much fun. And you look at games like Overwatch now, and it's just like, all right, cool, definitely. This is where all that came from. Half-Life, undeniably important to the industry and stuff. Not my favorite franchise of games. Me neither. It's it's great, and I, I get it. I respect it, I get it, but I just never liked them. Not for me. Portal, though. Portal, motherfucking Holy Portal. Holy crap. Portal, one of my favorite games of all time. To think that they outdid themselves with two. Yeah is insane but i there's something special about one being such a small contained experience that th- from beginning to end there's not a single puzzle that's like fuck this it's such a small team too working on it yeah but portal is a game that i never connected with because i my brain does not work in that manner mm. <laughs> and i had so much trouble with it like i i'm not great at puzzle games to begin with but uh <laughs> there's a moment in uh i think the shit on your friends party mode where I am down here and Greg is up here. No, no, no. Greg's down here and I'm up here. And Greg is shooting down so that this shit comes down for me up top. And I, of course, like I knew that that was a, a fucking mechanic, but yeah. it didn't, I didn't connect with it. And then I died. And then Kevin made a comment. He's like, yeah, Greg just knows how these fucking games work. I was like, yeah, like I'm not good at Portal and that's why I'm not good at that certain mm. level. Like my brain just doesn't work that quickly in scenarios like that. But that's a game where I I think I played, I saw several Let's Plays, but it's not a game that I actually ever wanted to pick up and oh like... Oh god, man, it's so it's so fucking hard. Good. I think it was like free on Steam one week or something like that. Or. <laughs> it's one of those games that I love so much because there's moments where I'm like, man, I, it would be really cool if they used it this way. And it's like, next thing you know, they're doing that. Like, using the momentum of shooting down and then jumping off the thing to shoot you across <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah. I'm like... That is, it makes me feel like a badass. And when yeah. I figure out the puzzle, it makes me feel really smart, even though I'm not. Like, I wasn't breezing through the game, you know, but yeah. it's like when it did click, I was like, hell yeah. Portal was cool because it was 
such a movement, if that makes sense, where it was, oh, the orange box is coming, Half-Life on console, all this, okay, cool, but it was like, and then it's got Portal in there, and everybody's like, well, what's Portal? Like, oh, it's a smaller game thing they're doing, it's puzzles and whatnot, you're like, oh, okay, and when those things got into IGN and into, our, into the ecosystem, that, like, slow domino effect of, like, holy shit, did you play Portal? Holy shit, and then it would be like, I remember being, like, Damon's house for like a rock band or out at a bar with Damon and friends and, and like he had just beat he's like everybody has to go play this one I remember going waking up the next morning and playing through it and like they were like and stay through the credits and all shit and you like get to the song and it's just like it was this game bursting with personality that was so yeah. short where it was like it was and I know that sounds goofy now because there's a million short games you play all the time play fucking 50 minutes of a game be like oh great but yeah like, I guess that was unique in 2007 in 2007 it was a game that you know and that's probably why it was bundled the way it was because okay we can get away with it, giving you this experimental project how long was it it's like two hours yeah maybe. me and I don't even know if that yeah, yeah it's something to that depending on how good you are yeah, at yeah, solving yeah, yeah. the puzzles like I'm pretty sure I put about two but hours going through in that game is it slowly becomes not a test chamber game yeah. that's what it starts as right like and I know it's so stupid to try to you know think back to 2007 now where we didn't know that Glad Glados was bad and we yeah. didn't know the cake was a lie and we didn't, didn't know, know that, we like, didn't know the you song can get behind the wall we, like yeah that, exactly and as that all so slowly started to get peppered in you're like what and then yeah you'd go behind that wall and like what the fuck like, holy like, shit it was man. awesome uh, smoke this joint bro oh my god it's like she's talking to me <laughs> I am science. <laughs> <laughs> this is a super obscure one, but I wanted to give a shout out to it. 12 years ago on October 10th. I love that game. Man, this is totally wrong. Whatever 12 years ago was, because I wrote 2015 Come and on. it's not. It's <laughs> 05. Uh, 2005. 2005. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge came out on PlayStation 2. Now, the fun fact about this. Lay it on me. Is it used the same engine as Devil May Cry, oh. and it was made by Capcom, oh. and it's actually a fucking phenomenal game. Phenomenal game, and everybody. Phenomenal. I, I went back Revenge. to look at it. Fucking IGN giving it a five point five. Who and reviewed like, it? Uh, I didn't recognize the name, but I was like, "That's Juan crazy." Like, this this is one of the most like the uh, unknown gem. That is just out there. Now, is this a real unknown gem yeah. or is this a Tim Gettys no, Get no, Hype no, no, Gatorade? No, no okay. this is fucking serious. Like, this game is, like, go look at a Let's Play of it. It is way better than it has any right to be, but it was made by Capcom. Like, it was made by people that made Devil May Cry okay. in the Devil May Cry engine. And it's just kind of just another Devil May Cry game. And it is Nightmare Before Christmas in a time <laughs> that I, it's funny because I feel like that game reviewed poorly because it just seemed like license a, a game cash in license yeah. thing during that era uh, for a franchise that was non-existent. Like there was just the Nightmare Before Christmas movie and this was before. And the movie came out like fucking 10 years before that. Before right? that. <laughs> and it, it was before Nightmare Before Christmas became the hot topic kind of mm. um, revival. Like this is cool thing. So like, I was reading Messenger the, the IGN status. review of and they're kind of hating on Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm like. Man, you guys, I'm gonna see some hating ass haters. You're a fucking hating ass hater, but check this game out. Like I know it's like I say that as if it's easy to get a obscure PS2 game, but uh, at least look at YouTube videos of it. It is way more impressive than it has any right to be. Thirteen years ago, on October 11, 2004, Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door came out on GameCube. The best Mario RPG we ever got, Ooh. even better than Super Mario RPG: Legend of the Seven Stars Damn. on Super Nintendo. Man, he's throwing down over here. You play any of the Paper Mario no. games? No, no, I did not. Uh, my buddy Jeff Chamberlain, who is an engineer on RT Games, I think that's like his favorite game. He, he loved uh, seven, uh, Legend of Seven Stars, but he would always talk about, I think he like rebought it at one point, and we were like, no, dude, we're all playing Overwatch, or we're all playing such and such. Uh, we're all playing uh, fucking Titanfall 2, and he's like, nah, I'm playing Thousand Year Door, Mario. I was like, dude, hey, it's good for you, Jeff. It is a fantastic game. And I remember it, it was one of the, the big review controversy games where Game Informer gave it like a 6.9, and it was like, no nice. way. Cause that, yeah, nice. But it was so out of the range, what everyone else was giving it, that it was like, what the fuck? Like, that was, that's totally not right, because it, it was a mm -hmm. great game. Um, can't wait. For like when Polygon gave Last of Us a 7.8. Never forget. Never, ever forget. What Never you got for me, Greg? Greg? Ivan Sulik reviewed it. I don't know who that is, dude. I know Ivan. I didn't work with Ivan, but I know Ivan. Mm. He has particular tastes. Six out of ten. That was it. Was a six out of ten? Yeah. Oh, he, your review of his taste is a six out of ten. No, the game review he did for Oogie Boogie's oh, Revenge yeah? or whatever. Yeah. Six. Oh, yeah. The one I saw was five point five. Seems like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I definitely saw that. Uh, 14 years ago, on October 13, 2003, Kirby Air Ride came out on GameCube. Now, what's important about this? Yeah. Kirby Air Ride, not played by many. 
Good game. I wouldn't say great game. Good game. Made by Sakurai and his team, the director mm. of the Smash Bros. franchise. Between all the Smash Bros. games, he's went out and made kind of weird-ass side project. Kirby's Air Ride was the one between Melee and Brawl, and then between Brawl and uh, Wii U was um, Kid Icarus on the 3DS, right? Yeah. So now, what's he going to do next? Why don't bring it up here? It's about time. Smash Bros. Before Smash, I think he's going to make another project yeah. on, on, the, on the Switch, and it'll be very experimental and weird. Let's get Maybe Smash on the Switch home. already. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, I'm. Oh, let's I know fucking what you're let's uh, come on, Tim. You've been giving them too much rope on this. You e- too everybody, much write to your fucking uh, senators and congressmen. Yep. Yep. Let mm. them know. Nintendo Power Magazine. Um. Yeah. Nailed it. This is for you, Greg. Fourteen you. years ago, on October 14, two thousand three, Jack Two came out on PS2. The best Jack. You think? It was my favorite. Mm. That was the one that really upset people. Oh, that was the one people hated. That was the oh, one people the, really didn't like with it. With all the, the guns. Yeah, it was GTA, but with Jack. Yeah. Oh, he's talking. We're running around. We're jacking cars. We got all the different guns. It was great. I think I only played the demo of that. People really like Jack. People like Jack 1. I did too. I like Precursor's Legacy, of course. And then people really like Jack 3. Because I think Jack 3 cor- correct course corrected, like, brought it back to the middle. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah. But I remember starting Jack 3 and not being into it for some reason mm. and then bailing. I enjoyed. There's like a plot twist in Jack Three that I really enjoy. But besides, which that, part where he gets Dark Echo was that in this one? I don't well, know. It was, it's the whole thing about the the uh, oh the timeline legacy and the timeline. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. I'm like hell yeah. Let's get into this. Let's, let's make I a really like convoluted games, franchise. Not yeah. not a big fan of the Jack monster. Uh, and then finally, 17 years ago, October 14, 2000, Pokemon Gold and Silver came out on Game Boy. And as Color, you all know clearly, best Pokemon games of all time. And now to celebrate the 20th anniversary, they're on the 3DS. Nice. So you can get into that. I remember my cousin having Pokemon games and just like telling my parents like that, that's what I want. I want and so they got me the neon Digimon, green Game Boy Digimon Color. Oh. Neon mm-hmm. green Game mm-hmm. Boy Color. Uh initially it was you know, Pokemon Yellow, right? That's what they got me for Christmas. But then uh, I ended up going gold. Going gold, gotta go gold. Um, I went silver, but I was a dumb kid. Did you catch Ho? Uh I I eventually got all okay. two fifty one. Really? Wow. Oh yeah, Good I was you, one of those dude. kids. Okay, no, yeah. I didn't do that, no. Mm. I was too busy just macking on honeys, you know? You, yep. you seem yep. like a honey yeah, macker. Dude, for sure. Miho. That's true. Now it's time. <laughs> Nicole, let him play your Game Boy. You know? <laughs> he doesn't have family where he's from. If you have questions for us, you can go to kindofunny.com slash gamescast, just like all these beautiful people did. Oklahoma Suki says, Oklahoma. so seems like Doom is running well on Switch. What does this mean for third-party Switch support? I mean, it means that if you put in the work... The game will run well. And if and you don't, you get won't. FIFA 18. Exactly. And that yeah. that's the biggest thing about this is that, you know, we talked about this on Games Daily uh, this week where somebody wrote in or, yeah, somebody wrote in was calling EA lazy for this, right? And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say that. I don't know what's going on. But it is the fact of how much work do you want to put in? How much time do you want to put in? How much love and money do you want to put into these games to make them run right? Clearly, you can. Now, what is it going to look like compared to you know or Doom compared to Doom PS4 or PS3 or no, I'm sorry PS4 Xbox One we'll see when we get there but yeah. I think it can happen even more important because Doom being an older game it's going to be judged a little bit differently but I think because it won't be as fresh in our mind exactly yeah yeah that's a that's the one thing and Wolfenstein yeah. is now a like a new AAA experience that it's it's going to be very interesting to see what happens and how Bethesda works with it and what that means for people going forward because obviously there is this gold rush to switch right now if you get your game out it sells really well but we're mainly talking about indies getting there and all these smaller experiences and Conga Conga Master Party getting there and I'm like all right sure I'll play this I want to play something on there but like. You're either going to be really excited for Doom and Wolfenstein on there or not really give a shit. And so that's the thing of like, I don't think, honestly, and I know if I had to make a prediction, I don't think that most of EA's catalog, they're going to worry about bringing it to Switch. And I don't think they should either. I don't know if that's really what it's about, Mm. what the audience is for. Give us a Mass Effect trilogy on Switch. That's what you want? Yeah, man. Just kind of rest up. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. No, it'd it'd be cool. Yeah. But then, would you? I don't know. Are, where are you going to play Wolfenstein 2 on? PS4, right? Well, no, this is the big thing of like, I want to play Wolfenstein 2. I'd still like to finish Wolfenstein 1 before then. That window is closed. Oh, I've, wa- I'm, I've just, I fucking settled for watching Let's Plays. Yeah. Like, just figure out the end of the story. The, the I never win- beat it, but I played a lot the of The window's it. closed on that, and even if it wasn't, it comes out on Hell Day of yeah. Super Mario Odyssey, Assassin's Creed Origins, Wolfenstein 2. There's some movie coming out, too. That's a big deal. I forget which one. 
there's all this stuff happening in, in on this day, so, so it already was falling to the back of my pile. I'm more I'm more excited to jump into Assassin's Creed than I am Wolfenstein, just because I'm more of a open yeah. world explorer third person game than I am Man, first person. I find shooter. myself with the opposite of that. No, and I think a lot of people yeah. are, but all the same, it's all Mario. Like Mario, will, if if we're just getting Mario, then if I'm not re- super far into Mario, if I'm not done with Mario, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what I'm gonna want to play. Yeah. And let let alone the other things I'm still playing on and working on and playing around with. I'm so, happy. anyways, where will I end up? I don't know. If if it gets to, you know, if we're anywhere in spitting distance of the Switch version, we're having, I'm like, oh, and I haven't played it yet. I might wait. Who knows? That's what's weird to me is it doesn't seem like a game I'd rather play on Switch. Like Doom and me Wolfenstein either. coming to Switch, I think is is a cool thing for Switch exclusive owners. Yeah. But it's a perfect example of the type of game that I'm like, if you have a PlayStation Four, Xbox One, like that's how you should play it. Like it be, but I have, this game is going to be a visual marvel. Like it's eight gonna, hour, like triple A experience. It's like, the first game in in uh, fucking um, in the new id tech like engine six or sure. whatever. It's going to be our first, or six or five, I forgot what it was, but it's our first look at that. And like every preview we've seen so far looks visually stunning. Sure. And if it were any other game, uh, again, like a game like 2K is something that I wish I had gotten on Switch mm-hmm. because it's not something that I play for visuals. But a, yeah, that's like a, I want to sit down in front of a giant TV with awesome sound and experience this fucking this uh, like it's like a movie you go to the theaters for sort of thing mm-hmm. i hear you and i feel you on that i just feel like and maybe this is just me this year where when i sit down it's a constant struggle of do i want to play more friday the 13th do i want to play more marvel heroes do i want to play more destiny or do i want to try one of these other new single player games or in play through that and i really do feel like when i get down to it like the switch is great and i love my switch but i'm always looking for something that's the everlasting gobstopper that i'm never going to stop playing and we've talked about this with like zelda technically could be that but it's not how i want to play zelda like i i beat ganon and i had already gotten all the stuff i wanted to get and i'm I'm done until the dlc comes out but to sit down like as much as we're on the road like i feel like that's how it's going to get prioritized is well i might as well let wolfenstein sit there because i still have a backlog i still have these three games i still Mm -hmm. have this for game of the year i need to play that i should be doing before i get there Mm. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, speaking of switch and third party stuff wwe 2k18 i heard cool greg said we got codes yeah switch codes no mm. didn't Is they get there? pushed that got pushed oh I did thought. it yeah i thought they qui- ask, i think they quietly that? said that it's coming later got it but i'll double check my mm, facts mm, mm, mm. pretty sure it launched it's just yeah uh Please double check on your facts. Okay? Shakes you, Double D Doherty says this we, motherfucker. Will we Shannon ever see Diane Shannon Di- Diana Ross from uh, Greg Miller Industries? Yeah, thank you. Will we ever see another year like 2017 in gaming ever again? Yes, I think eventually. I do think it's, it's going to be, be a, while. a very long time. I think the the secret X factor to what made this year above and beyond in terms of games was the fact that Nintendo came back. Like right. if you took the Switch out and Zelda and Mario and like all that stuff and it was just all the other amazing games, it's a damn good year. But it's like when you add the the Switch being a success and bringing portable gaming back and all this stuff, it's like I think that's the the crazy thing. And like we're not going to see something to that extent. Well, in the future, what franchises could, that could come back would be a part of this next big year. Mm-hmm. Like we franchise obviously we're not going to see a new Mario or a new Zelda for a long time. And even if we see a new one it's not going to be the groundbreaking oh, no, like, no, no. you know Odyssey being the first Sunshine 64 style one since 2001 right. or Zelda being like we're ground up Zelda's going to be a totally new type of game. Like that was huge whereas I think other things that make 2017 so special is they did reinvent other franchises like Resident Evil 7 or there was new uh, new IP that fucking nailed it, like Horizon. So, yeah. there, like, there there was a lot going on. It was a good on. mixed bag. But it's it's a mixed bag where I think they ticked every single sure. thing on the checklist of what makes a game special. Well, in the next few years, the next coming year, probably, we'll get Anthem. We'll get... <laughs> in the next year... Well, no, no, no. I'm saying, like, for, for the next big year to happen or whatever, okay. I'm trying to figure out what franchises will be coming out that are not the ones that already came out this year. Like, obviously, we won't get a new Zelda or Mario or whatever, but we'll get a Pokemon on Switch. Like, what could classify the next big thing as the next big year? Like, what games would be well, in that era? So you're talking about, will we ever get... So you're still talking... Answer the, the Cheeks question. Mm-hmm. By the way, Fall 2017 is what Switch still, is left at cool. now. Uh, so you're just talking about what will be... 
what's the next uh, timetable? Yeah. What's the next secret what sauce? What franchises in the in it's, the future could match up to this? Year? But it's so much more than that. Where it's not even that you need to worry about the franchises. You need to worry about a system launching. Like I mean, like the Switch came and yeah. I really think changed the game and invigorated us all and got us excited. And it's this crazy handheld hybrid that people are into. That that alone is cool, right? And then like you're saying, it is the fact that PlayStation's got Horizon. PlayStation's got all these different things happening over here, and they're still supporting VR or whatever. I don't know that you don't really need to keep that as a bullet point for this. But then <laughs> it is Mario. It is Zelda. It is this. It is I, there's so much happening. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it is firing on all cylinders. I think it's more than just like what's every year has this great run of games yeah. right and like it is cool to see when it is like run as uncharted and halo and all these things happening at once but i think even if we have when when let's say it was you know take the year out of it but in one year we're gonna get let's say last, last of us, of us and too. spider-man and mm-hmm. let's say phantom pain happened or not phantom pain, uh death stranding thank you death stranding happened and then PlayStation Five happens at this. I mean, like, there's so many different weird things that have to happen. Yeah. Even then, it's not covering the Nintendo boxes. It seems like everybody's on top. Xbox is launching the Xbox One X, which, you know, whatever. Uh, Player unknown. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I'm not trying to yeah, say that's yeah, a big yeah. point. I'm saying they have something going on. PUBG mm-hmm. happens this year, and PUBG is coming over to Xbox yeah. and doing it there. Yeah, that's why I'm Uncharted just trying. For, I'm just trying to visualize like what in the future could combat this year. And it's just like it just doesn't. It's just hard to. It's a perfect storm. Kingdom Hearts three, Final Final Fantasy seven, episode one be, comes out. Like, yeah. who knows when that is? But yeah, this is a tough year to. And I think top. there's something to be said about not just the things happening, but them being good, them actually being successes. Yeah. It's like oh, looking yeah. at Sonic Mania and it being good, looking at Cuphead and it being good. Like these things deliver the quality and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like Res- we had Res- an Resident Uncharted game well. this Persona year that's going to be looked over. Like yeah. Uncharted Four Lost Legacy is fantastic, and it's such an afterthought so far. Like. It's that's crazy. That was like a month ago. Yeah, that's crazy. And then you have Neo, and you have Near, and you have Persona Five. Like, yeah, fuck. I mean, this is why I did I did the GameStop video or whatever. Why I think this is the best year in gaming, and I asked people on Twitter like what their counter arguments were, and people put out like great years, but it was great years because it was like. uh, Metal Gear and Zelda, and it's like I get that, but like it wasn't where it is now. Where I feel like every week there's an amazing game that comes. Yeah, 2017 or 98. Those are the only ones that can stack up next to each other. Uh, 2007. No, no, somebody put that out there. 2013, too. also. Okay, but only because it's like The Last of Us, Bioshock Infinite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Bioshock Infinite, not that great. No, it's great, dude. It's fun and good, but it's, did you you beat yeah, it? Yeah, hell yeah, I beat it. Oh man, that game had such an effect on me. Drew Canada says, with the announced Zone of the Enders remaster, do you think Konami's testing the waters for a new entry or just remastering old titles? I definitely think they're just. Remastering the old stuff and just trying to make money. I, I make money off the catalog. Yeah. yeah, like Konami's in such a not weird place, such a bad place right now. I think that they need to, if they are serious about staying in the AAA game space or even just the game space, I think that they're going to need to to come out and prove something and like have a lineup where they're like, "Here's what we're going to do," and we un- there needs to be an apology. Yeah, and I I don't expect that we're going to get that. No. But uh, a new Zone of the Enders, I don't think we're going to get one of those without Kojima uh, involved at all. Yeah. You know? And then with Metal Gear Survive, like, we'll fucking see. Like, I'm still not totally convinced that game doesn't just get canceled. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, you know? shit, yeah. It's it seems like, how there's so no buzz, along, there's so but... much hate, there's all these different things. Yeah. yeah. Man, as much as I, like, I'm, ca- I'm glad that they're struggling just because of the whole, like, I love Kojima. Um, but... I'm such a shitty person, but I would like totally buy a Snake Eater fucking PS4. Yeah, PS4 no. remake that looked like those fucking cutscenes from the Pachinko machine. machine. Like yeah. that, that was, looked incredible. That the the saddest thing is the Fox Engine. Just the Fox being Engine used is so incredible. So few and it's just, games because it's beautiful yeah. and it allows so much great things. And then here we are, Pachinko. Machine. And we saw like a game on Fox Engine that was like cross gen and. What 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 would it be like if it was to run just on pure, just pure current gen? Ugh, breaks my heart. Greg. I'm sorry, buddy. Breaks my heart. Don't mean that this happened. Death then, Stranding. Last Bayside. question Please for the day. Side. Greg, an oldie but a goodie. Ah, oh, fuck. From Chris Brown. With the Switch gaining momentum, is a PS Vita 2 actually a possibility? No. Not at all. No. Never. <laughs> just the dream is dead. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this week on the Kind of Funny Games cast. We will see you next week. Until then, I love you. I love you. Bye. Mm-hmm.